We love cricket in India. Just the thrill of watching our favorite sportsmen on the field and smashing the game is exciting. Two cricket enthusiasts, Joy Bhattacharya and Abhishek Mukherjee, join us in this session to talk about their book, The Great Indian Cricket Circus. Watch this fun interaction now. Hey, hello and welcome. My name is Joy Bhattacharya. With me is Abhishek Mukherjee. And we are discussing on World Book Day, uh, something that we managed to write together, the great Indian cricket circus. How does it feel, Abhishek? It's been almost a year now. How does it feel? Yeah, I mean, uh, the my initial reaction at this point is, so much has happened in Indian cricket since the book was written. So... Know, so there's yeah. lots, that means the second edition is absolutely, totally necessary, right? Yes. I, 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 I don't think this will go away with the second edition either. <laughs> <laughs> I know. See, in fact, that's one of the things that when this year's IPL started, one of the first things we are looking at is seeing all the ads of, uh, especially one of the ads that Dream11 had, which has KL Rahul and it has Sunil Shetty and all the Bollywood connections with cricket and all that. So it's quite fascinating, you know. Uh, you, you want to tell some of our viewers about some of the Bollywood connections in our book? Which are yes. your picks? Uh, it is uh, difficult to pick. I mean, uh, we ha there are some obviously very famous ones. But uh, soon after the 1983 World Cup, uh, directors signed up Sandeep Patil for a movie role. And uh, a, a, a lead, lead role in Kabhi Ajnabi Thay. So, Syed Kirmani also wanted a role in that. So he ended up playing a villain sidekick. And in one of the scenes uh, filmed in the Mumbai Maidan, they needed a group of young cricketers. So that featured a very young boy called Sachin Tendulkar. <laughs> what a lovely story. I mean, look, Sachin comes off filmy stock. At the end of the day, he's named after Sachin Dev Burman. I mean, what more can you want from being, a, I mean, if you're a cricket lover and a music lover, Sachin is where it all combines. Sachin Dev Burman, Sachin yeah. Dev Burman, that's where it all combines. But yeah, fascinating. Also, I mean, the kind of things that people who were interested in cricket at that time, I mean, I remember, I think you were the one who sent me a picture of Satyatre leading a cricket team on the field. Apparently, he also used to enjoy playing cricket. Yeah, I mean, uh, in the, what, 1950s, 60s, 70s, there were many, even as late as in 1980s, uh, cricket was one of the ways to raise funds for issues. And some of these matches also got first-class status. But they, uh, but some were purely exhibition matches. We used to call them masala matches back then. And they often involved one team of cricketers and one team of actors. So you'll see actors taking part in, I mean, obviously these were not serious matches, but the actors took them very seriously. And you'll see uh, things like that. But uh, one of the early uh, earliest connections between the two things was one of the early ads on cricket. So in the 1930s, uh, when Bombay Talkies came out, during their early, early movies, what they did was they promised that uh, during the matches, during the movie runs, they would show a small clip of the ongoing Bombay, pin, Bombay quadrangular matches. So and they advertised this. This was this is one of the earliest known advertisements of cricket on Indian. I mean, it's cricket and cinema together in Indian uh, newspapers. You know, obviously, also it means two things. It means that cricket was a large enough attraction, saying that if I say I'm going to show a little bit of the cricket match, people are going to come and watch my films as well. And I think it's just the same even now. I mean, even now that connection between that cricket and films is so. You know, I've worked so many, I seven years with Shah Rukh Khan. And uh, all of them, I mean, Shah Rukh, his friends, all of them are crazy about cricket. I mean, Nasir was, you know, we did Super Selected together, the show. And he was crazy. He and, you know, Tom Alter, they had this match cut 11. They used to keep playing on the weekends. And they were very serious about their cricket. They were very, very serious. And I don't know whether you know, I, did we mention in the book that Nasir actually has a nephew? Yes, I think we did mention in the book. Who is yes. playing test cricket? That's always Shah. 
but he's played cricket for Pakistan, but he's Nasir's nephew. England. He he was a uh, quite a good cricketer. In fact, he came to KKR as well, spent a few seasons here. Yes. So it was very, very interesting to see him. But uh, Shah Rukh himself, for example, was a was not a great batter, as you know, we used to, we used to have these festival matches between RCB and KKR. But he was a great, he was very fit and he was a good keeper. He was a very, very good keeper. Yes. He was a keeper, he was a goalkeeper, he was a hockey goalkeeper, he could reflexes. So that was one thing that, you know, he was very into. And it's it's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, being a good wicket keeper is fine because uh, he was in the pre Gilchrist era, pre Gilchrist, pre Flower era. So he was not expected to bat well as well. Actually, yeah, you're right. You know, this wicket keeper batsman thing has come up much more recently. Perhaps, you know, Desmond Haynes, that's where it started, you know. Yeah. yeah wicket a... keeper batter is a standard. Uh, right? We have a wicket keeper, own, wicket keeper IPL owner. You don't get that combination. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the other story that I never I ended up telling the book because I think it's not one of those things just stayed there is that when we wanted to do Super Selector and we wanted to set it up and do it, the first person we thought of as a host was somebody because the film had just released, the film course was called Lagan. And my colleague was a certain Raymond Hume, who was still a very close friend many years after we worked together in ESPN Star Sports. And we said the best guy to present this is Nasruddin Shah. And we went to Nasi, uh, sorry, not Nasiruddin Shah, before that, Amir Khan. And we went and met Amir Khan. And at that time, I remember he had just he had given up his Lagan look because if you remember that same year, Lagan and Dil Chata had launched almost very close to mm-hmm. each other. Three, four years, months apart, they launched. So he was already had that whole Dil Chata hai look. And he was, he was there. He met us. He spoke to us. If you've seen the first episode of Super Selector, Amir Khan had a team in it also. He was calling in from Canada. He used to make his replacements. He had a team. So with Sidhu's name, you'll see Amir Khan's name there. Unfortunately, it's so crazy. All those tapes are lost because what happened was that when ESPN Star sort of broke up as an organization, became only Star Sports, somebody in Singapore who had no understanding of cricket went through those tapes and all the tapes of Super Selector, Harsha Online, all of them were junked. It's it's something, it's, I feel almost violated because it's a part of our history. But Amir Khan was very, very keen on doing it. He just said, I remember finally when he refused, he's, the only reason he gave was, he said, if I had to do a show, TV show to come into TV, this would be the show. But right now, I'm still not, you know, ready for television. So, you know, that's the reason that uh, you stopped out there. That is uh, that is the cricket side of Bollywood. Now, uh, you spot random move, random cricket matches or cricket shows while watching Bollywood movies. Suppose Maine Pyar Kiya. You start. Uh, it is a movie <laughs> where you don't associate with cricket, but I think it was the song was Tum Ladki Ho, Main Darka Hu. So when they play the song and you see them watching TV, and they, when they zoom onto the TV for a split second. You see, they're playing the TV show Sunil Gavaskar Presents. Oh, wow. I didn't know. (laughs) Yeah. So, (laughs) there are uh, uh, random Bollywood movies have uh, random cricket matches and shows. And a few days ago, a few years ago, when the song, uh, uh, what was that? I keep forgetting. But the movie with the song Balam Pichkari. So, Uh uh, before that, uh, not too long before that, they, uh, they were leaving for a hill station. And before going, one of the characters was watching an early morning India-Pakistan match uh, live. He he used to play his bets on matches. So we went on a long online discussion. So which match just before Holi could have been played in the morning between India-Pakistan? <laughs> so and in, in the early hours, it, 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 so we tracked down some match from Australia. Whoa. So it, it, it's a things like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, did you track down the match? Did you manage to get the match? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a specific match sometime in the 2000s. So, yeah, the directors, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That That is the one thing that even I've, you know, I've noticed whenever we've gone. The passion that people in Bollywood have on the film industry have for cricket is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, the kind of fans they are, the kind of people who always manage to have at least... You know, at least they have their phone to watch the games. You know, they watch mm-hmm. cricket all the time. And I think oh, that, that's, I mean, it's only to be expected because if you have a national sport, really, 
I mean, that way hockey is a national sport, but really cricket has overtaken it for the last at least two, three decades. I think you have to say that. I mean, post 83, I think you have to say that cricket is where we are. Yeah, post 83. But uh, uh, you mentioned that. But uh, even in the 1960s, you go back and you read reports and you see newspapers complain, newspapers and magazines complaining, all India radio giving too much time to cricket. <laughs> By the, back then, India had not even won in Australia, in West Indies and England in 1971. Since before that, India was still the global, uh, strongest was... global team in hockey. But they were still devoting more time to cricket. <laughs> this uh, well, obsession with cricket is remains inexplicable. I mean, it has been there for at least a century. It's It peaked after 71. It definitely peaked after 1983. 1983 brought about a pan-India change in in a lot of things, but it was mysteriously there always. Yeah, absolutely. No, I also wanted to pick your brains about one of the things that, you know, we've been talking about this. It is World Book Day after all. So, cricket and books, I mean, you know, the connection, firstly, your favorite cricket books. Other than that, what are the cricket books that, you yes, know? yes. Uh, okay, it has to be your favorite. It's mine as well. It's uh, right out here. It has to be our favorite because what this book does actually, and I, it's, it's time to stop for a little ad of the book, is it's got thousands of hours of us watching cricket, reading about cricket in newspapers, in articles, in books, and finding stuff together to put together in one place so that you can sit and read it all at one place. So it's all out here in this book. And if uh, Abhishek has his way, we should have a second edition out pretty, pretty soon because we need to do that. But, uh, okay, so let's set that aside. What are the other books that you've enjoyed on cricket? And is there a books that mention cricket or fiction books that mention cricket? Are there instances that you can remember? Okay. Um, see, one of the things, first of all, my favorite cricket, this is a very, this is a topic on which I can go on for hours, but... Uh, <laughs> Okay, let's stick to Indian books at this point. So, I think I would start with... Uh, uh, I don't know. An Autobiography of an Unknown Indian Cricketer. Shujit Mukherjee's book. Okay. So, uh, it uh, goes deep into Ranji Trophy. And uh, uh, while it uh, goes deep into Ranji Trophy and uh, basically goes around the life of a Ranji Trophy cricketer. This is something Akash Chopra has also done brilliantly in Beyond the Blues, uh, showing the contrast between the glamorous cricket and the, uh, and the cricket away from the, all the glamour. Uh, a Fire Burns Blue by uh, Karunia Keshav and Patan the late Siddhanta Patanayak. It, uh, perhaps the most important book uh, to have most important cricket book to have come out in India. It uh, covers, it writes about women's cricket in India. Uh, like, no, no, I don't think any other book has captured it at, at this well. Cricket autobiographies. Uh, uh, we have grown up on Gavaskar's books. They are obviously yeah, the most popular. Before Gavaskar, I shall definitely mention Mustak Ali's Cricket Delightful. It is one of the Best and I mean it lives up to its name. Uh, Tiger's Tail, Pataudis, and uh, what else? Uh, I really like Manjrekar's book, by the way. Uh, yeah, Manjrekar's book. Yeah, uh, perfect. Yeah, it's an honest book. It's a very they've yeah. tried yeah. very hard to write a very very honest book, and we have to give him credit for that. But yes. yeah, I mean, it's not easy to write. In fact, I remember when I wrote my first fiction with my son, Junior Premier League. And the big mm -hmm. thing was saying, what do I, what was my, my the, the target was obviously, it was about, you know, target was teenagers and tweeners, that kind of age of kids. And the idea was to try and create a situation where you actually, you know, have, get people, or get them a sense of what it is to, you know, be part of the IPL, you know, be inside that dressing room, feel a bit of it. And I think that is the one thing that uh, I really, really enjoyed doing. You know, and going to some of those grounds and just describing some of those grounds, you know, Firosha Kotla, Eden Gardens, Cricket Club of India, CCI. And I think, I mean, if you ask my opinion, that is possibly the prettiest cricket ground for me is that one and the one in Chell. And yeah, writing about all those is also absolutely fantastic. 
but uh, have you read Zoe Affected? Yes. Yeah. We can discuss uh, cricket fiction is another thing. I mean, uh, very unusual names have written about uh, very unusual, unexpected people have written about Indian cricket. For example, Jeffrey Archer in one of the stories on uh, in his collection, A Quiver yep. for the Pharaohs. I remember that story. There is one story definitely modeled around modeled on Pataudi. I mean, if you read the story, you'll realize it is written about Pataudi, whom Archer knew personally. No, no, it is fiction, but the lead character yeah, is definitely based on Yeah, the father supposed to century, the son is yes, yes, yes. for a century, supposed to get, yes. I mean, okay, we won't give any more spoilers, but it was a really, I remember reading that story, you know, in the 90s and wondering, you know, this has to be put out. And of course, by now, yes. there's so much data available on the net and all that there's no doubt that it is. But yeah, I, I really enjoy reading cricket fiction as well. Uh, I think... As I said, it's still there's still place for one really, really good book on the IPL. Uh, it still hasn't. I still feel that you know we've got we've had TV series and all, but I don't think we've really had the definitive sort of IPL book. You know, no, but, not yet. But again, uh, the I uh, uh, with since T Twenty, I mean, I feel I fear that any book on out IPL will be out maybe an outdated book in two years time the sport the version is changing so fast the the universe from which ipl cricketers were selected i mean every year you find about 10 new names several of them go on to become uh, big stars so <laughs> the i mean every ipl becomes outdated in two seasons time no, i think no. that is uh, I so, so totally agree with you. In fact, I was just, you know, we, we've seen the emergence of Mayan Kyadu this season. And I mean, just see the kind of quality of player who's sitting. Somebody's bowling at 150 and you haven't heard of him at all. And just Vijay Dahiya sees him in the Delhi Nets and goes and tells Lucknow they should go and pick him up. They pick him up and they don't play him at all. He was injured that year. Comes back and he's mm -hmm. like, amazing. I mean, Shashank Singh, you know, playing. Uh, Ashutosh Sharma, everyone knows he's scored a, you know, 36, this this 36, he's scored a 15, 11 balls for, uh, I think, the railways against Arunachal. So, any yes. in, against any opposition scoring of 15, 11 balls is something. I think he broke Yuvraj Singh's record. So, that is the one thing that's happening is that the IPL is... And what I was noticing is, you know, you see some of the early matches this season. It's the Indian players who are doing most of it. That is what is so totally amazing. So, you know, you could literally make two Indian teams or three Indian teams. And, you know, that is the one discussion that how do you have a proper World Cup team when you could literally make two teams from India e e just as good as each other? And one, so we, one of the things is, one of the uh, things IPL has done is given them assured careers. So, once you do that, you'll uh, attract a, a much larger group of talent. Because earlier, parents used to discourage their children from playing, Indian parents. Now they realize there's probably as much money to be made in IPL, there's as much chance of a career to be made out of cricket as there is in a conventional, say, engineering or med medical degree. Yeah, in fact, whenever I think of that, I think of Harsha Bogle because, you know, Harsha is such a good friend. Where does Harsha start his journey? Harsha's journey has literally started... You know, doing commentary, of course, in Osmania University in Hyderabad and then, you know, doing that. But I mean, the way he at that time, he took a decision to do cricket yes. for a living. And as an engineer MBA for him to do that was so, so difficult. And yes. I promise you now today we are in a situation where I take guest lectures at you know, sports management in IM Cal and in MICA. And students surround me in the end saying, how can we get into sport? And I, I try and tell them that, you know, you're going to get paid about one-tenth of what you'll get paid when you, if you join that fancy foreign bank or that fancy consultancy. And they still don't want to just, just be in sport. And I think that is one very, very big part of it. The fact that there's so much interest in sport and, this big, and a large part of it is because the IPL has created a market large enough and given... It's given wing to dreams. I mean, there's so many things we can say about the IPL, but it has given wings to dreams. I think that is something that is absolutely unbelievable. What it's done for 
just not for cricket but for sport in india because uh, you know that whole ecosystem of sport you know when you get a physiotherapist yes. and a trainer in that guy also is a physiotherapist or a trainer or a psychologist for other sports and that whole ecosystem just expands and i think it's absolutely fantastic seeing that happen and uh, even our people who are not directly involved to the see you get to buy counterfeit jerseys the kohli and rohit and dhoni <laughs> jerseys i have talked to the people i mean they wait all year for ipl match or for the ipl because that is when their sales peak so it the ipl uh, feeds more people than is than is documented <laughs> So oh, absolutely, the ecosystem is much larger than documented. Yes, yes. But uh, my question to you is that: uh, Are you worried about the World Cup this time? This cricket World Cup? Oh, there, there is one every year. If not this <laughs> one, <laughs> there will be, the, be another. That is also true. That is also true. There is one every year. It never stops. Every year there will be something. Yeah, and next year there is a. To twenty twenty five is a World Test Championship final and the Champions Trophy. Yeah. 2020, so 2026 yeah. T20 World Cup, 2027 there's a World Cup. So <laughs> you don't get a break from the World Cup. I mean, this is just the men's men's tournaments. Yeah. But tell me something. Uh, have you read uh, biographies, women's autobiographies, or biographies on women cricketers? And any one you particularly recommend? Because I know you are somebody who is a passionate advocate for uh, women's cricket. Uh, any particular book? Uh, uh indian cricketers i don't think there is a, any a, a, any big name has written but i have heard i keep hearing that there are some in the pipeline yeah i think so that, that let's is, let's wait the, for they that into, they are going straight into a film right now they're not really yes. the express shavash me too i think they're looking at it first as a film then rather as a you know as a television pro, as a book mm-hmm. because you know uh and that's exactly what's happening but uh, women's cricket otherwise you know there's so much more happening with this women's premier league as well and uh, i mean am i to believe that uh, you had a team this time did you it support a particular team this time in the women's team i league? yes uh, last year all uh, last year i find, found the up warriors i i generally like them i generally like how they approach t20 but it will probably they'll probably take some time to get the fan base of the ones that already have ipl ipl teams no that's that's absolutely true in fact uh, women's cricket is also interesting that you know i was speaking to mithali mithali is one of the few cricketers who actually reads a lot and yes. uh, one of the reasons she gave for reading which is very interesting because i interviewed her once and she said that one of the reasons i like to read books used to like to read books was when she started her career she was much younger than all the senior cricketers so you know those cricketers were talking about marriage and their children and what to do here and in laws and she said i am 17 18 years old i have no idea about all this so i would sit in the corner and read my book and that's how she became a huge reader so you know there are many many ways you look at it but you know reading can come from very many different ways yeah. but uh, i i want you to you know tell me a little bit more about the book there's so much you're talking about we should talk about the book tell me one of your favorite chapters from our book you know because what did you enjoy my favorite writing? chapters invariably revolve around food <laughs> so <laughs> go for it we are both yeah. happy we can afford to here's where we can afford to make ourselves happy go for it which what what do you want to tell us about yeah uh, i think uh, uh, man singh wrote a book on hyderabad cricket and he called it biryani cricket so <laughs> let's i mean or cricket biryani i i i i couldn't think of a better name on a book on big name for a book on hyderabad cricket yeah but uh, uh, regarding food well uh, one of the lesser known things is uh, the india australia women's world cup uh, semi final of 2017 this got started very late because uh, there was rain and the match was reduced uh, so by the time everything was decided in the excitement of it all uh, in the tension of it all the indian cricket is uh, forgot to eat oh god so <laughs> and by the time they realized this there was no food so the fans the indian fans at the venue they got some samosas from the team. so and that was after soon afterwards an injured harmanpreet kaur she carried an injury into the match made that 
Oh so God. that innings was played by an injured cricketer fueled by samosas. <laughs> we have we have to remember this. I think injured cricketers fueled by samosas is should be the title of a book as well. It is just yes. an amazing, amazing title. Uh, you know, I was thinking my favorite is obviously always got to be to do with uh, something I really enjoy because I really enjoy names and etymologies and whole you know things like Shanta Ramagaswami was you know nicknamed Bhim is something that I found so cool that. There were women cricketers out there who stroke play so strong and so brutal that, you know, you have it. Or you have the fact that, you know, Ramesh Chandra Natkarni, he preferred to wear the langot because, you know, it's something, langot is something which is very common, especially in the 50s and 60s to wear. And because of that, he's become Bapu because Bapu used to wear the langot. Uh, those are things that I find lovely. And the other one is, you know, stuff like that about numbers. So why is, why does... Uh, uh, 97, you know, Safraz and Noshe, uh, Mushir Khan both were 97. You know, the whole thing of no and Sa. Yes. You know. So, Noshad Khan, no, so 9-7. Interestingly, another person, another cricketer who was also backed by the same person has a, uh, has a took a number completely to do with his name. So, Iqbal Abdullah, who played, you know, many matches for Kolkata Knight Riders, played very well for Bombay was part of that under-19 World Cup team with Virat Kohli that won in 2008 in Malaysia. His jersey number is 21. And the reason his jersey number is 21 is because 21 in Hindi is Ikkis. So it's, his nickname is Ikki. So 21 Ikkis. So that's why he does it. So it's fascinating when you read stuff like that. I really, really enjoy it. Any other nicknames you enjoy? You know... Uh, the concept of the Indian nicknames are can be bizarre because, uh, say, Subhash Gupte, he, his, nick, his nickname was Fergie after a West Indian leg spinner called Ferguson. Now, this Ferguson is an obscure cricketer. I know. There was no actual reason for Gupte to be renamed, uh, to be nicknamed after him. There was another, another is Vijay Manjirekar who got the nickname Tat after English bowler Tattersall. Mm. Again, I remember Roy Tattersall. Yeah, Roy Tattersall, because there was nothing common between them. Tattersall was a bowler. Exactly. Manjarekar was a batter who sometimes kept wicket. But it just got point. No, it, it's very interesting. You, even if you see uh, the Bengal cricketers nowadays, they all have names like that. So, Riddhiman is Popsy. He's always called Popsy in the, uh, this thing. Pops or Popsy. Uh, Shorashish Lahiri is called Patsy. And I've always wondered how they've got their nickname. But, you know, they, all the Bengal cricketers have very, very interesting nicknames. And I, I wonder what they call Shami. They, he must have a name as well, but I haven't got around to it as yet. Uh, Shami also has my favorite biryani. one of my favorite biryani stories. In town club, they used to lure him with biryani. He loves biryani. So, <laughs> he, they used to lure him with biryani. And, I mean, that would apparently motivate him to go... Um, go, I mean, go at the batters even more for more wickets. But yeah, uh, regarding Bengal nicknames, Rupal Chatterjee, uh, uh, bold pace in towards the early left arm pace towards the early in his early days. So he they named uh, nicknamed him David after Alan Davidson. He later switched to spin, but the nickname stuck. Yeah, I remember David. David's from my school. David is from Calcutta Boys School. He played for my school uh, and. Uh... David, you are absolutely right. And actually, to be honest with you, because I'm I'm a left arm bowler myself, Alan Davidson is always a favorite because you know we were growing up on reading about cricketers rather than seeing them. And Alan Davidson in that tight test, you know, ten wickets, you know, everything that he did, he was a legend, you know. And you know, if you ask me your your favorite pace attack, you know, most people choose the West Indians, but I've seen the West Indians. Therefore, you know, the drama of something that you've seen is never as much as legend. So, for me, that attack is always going to be, you know, Millard, Lindwall and Davidson. You know, that is for me the, you know, ultimate pace attack that I've always dreamt about. You know. Did you ever have a sort of favorite pace attack of your own or you know, that you particularly liked? I was actually too young for the Roberts holding Garner generation. Yeah, I have I... seen some of Marshall, but... I uh, must have seen uh, Holding, but I I just don't have clear memory. So for me, it will probably be Roberts Holding uh, and Garner. Uh, I've never seen Garner. He never came to India. 
but uh, i mean never came to india during so to play test cricket but roberts holding garner and croft is some uh, is an attack i would have loved to see but then we have the current indian pace attack oh it's amazing this indian pace attack that's you know sometimes that's the one thing that we don't realize that we are right now we have a pace attack which is perhaps the greatest is the greatest in indian fast bowling history definitely is i i can't i mean even with all of uh, i can't remember a better time for indian fast bowling and i think we also have a spin attack which is legendary you know we talk about the great yes. legendary spinners but ravindra jadeja and ravichandran ashwin the numbers are just absolutely staggering and we do we refuse to accept it because we are sometimes our eyes are you know we are we are too nostalgic but what we are seeing in front of us are two of the greatest exponents of the game yes yes and they can also bat i mean remember they between them they have about 5000 test runs exactly and uh, the thing is india currently have a, uh, uh, the depth of the indian bowling attack is such that they can take 20 wickets in a test match in india and or in in australia or england and 20 wickets in a test match in india at the same time they can field two attacks and still take 20 wickets in each test no absolutely perfect yeah. that that's something that to think about that's that's one of the things to celebrate that we are living in a world right now which is absolutely amazing in terms of the quality of what we have we are living in a cricket time that is it's a golden age for indian cricket and yes. it's sometimes because it's happening right in front of you you don't appreciate it but of course you'll see read much more about it in our hopefully in the next edition of this book or if you haven't picked up this book the great indian cricket circus by now it's really time you do it because if you don't buy it uh, and we don't finish talk then abhishek cannot write a second edition and he's going to get really angry at you and that's not a good idea okay so we we'll leave you with that uh, it was really fun doing this thanks for joining us abhishek i leave going to leave you now to go and enjoy some biryani unless it's too early for you and uh, happy book day to everybody same